right, well here is the finished BT30 umbrella tool changer for the Masso G3. As you can see, I've had to add uh, quite a bit to get this to um, sort of a finished state. Now the gentleman that I'm making this for is going to make his own mounting system and cover for the tool changer. But I have everything else wired up and functional. Now the Masso uh, G3 requires that each position is counted. So we had to modify the fork disc here. I also had to modify the gearbox to adapt to the NEMA 34, which we required this uh, adapter mount here, as well as a sleeve to reduce this from 19 millimeter to 14 millimeter. Uh, this particular ATC, it is quite beefy as you can see. Uh, the fork disc is 5 8 of an inch thick or like 15 millimeters. We have 20 millimeters on this plate here, 20 millimeters on the back plate. Uh, this plate here is 5 8 of an inch, uh, 15 millimeters. It's quite substantial. The gearbox itself is, is quite large. It's running linear rails. These are 25 millimeter linear rails. I don't believe they're genuine Highland rails. However, they seem really nice, very smooth, and I'm sure they'll last to the life of the tool changer. Uh, the air cylinder itself is very well made. Uh, it did come with the two sensors for the retract and extend. It came with one home sensor, which we had to modify the bracket. Talk about that in another video. Let me see if I can show you the bracket here. So you can see the bracket underneath here is for a double sensor, uh, one to indicate which position, and then when it, it reaches position one, it'll flag the home sensor as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got a DB9 connection here. This will go out to the, straight out to the Masso, and he can wire that directly to that. We've added our air solenoid for our extend and retract. And uh, it turned out really well. And I think for the cost involved for this particular situation, it was um, well worth taking the risk trying to make it work. As you can see, it came orange, but in the picture they're gold colored. It is quite large. Um, don't think you're going to put this on a Precision Matthews. Don't think you're going to put it on a Grizzly G0704. Uh, I wouldn't even mount this to a, a large Precision Matthews 9x32. It's just really heavy. If you're going to mount this, you can't really mount it to the side of the column. It's just going to, it's, it just weighs too much. This whole unit here is going to be about say, uh, 65 pounds, and we haven't even added the the cover over here yet so it's going to be uh, quite heavy and that's a lot of mass moving in and out on the side of your column so it's really going to have to be supported well but if you have a larger machine or if you're retrofitting an older machine that doesn't have a uh, an ATC this right here would be good or if you if you maybe if you have a ISO 20 or BT 30 router a large router this might be nice to have on it'll probably work good but I know many of you have probably seen these uh, ATC's and wondered what exactly do you get how I, how big is it exactly and haven't seen really uh, any videos on that so I thought I'd shoot a video on this and show so you. here is the Masso BT30 tool changer wiring diagram so let's go over some of the things needed specifically for the Masso G3 and the Umbrella Tool Changer. Now Masso designed a lot of different features into the logic for the Umbrella Tool Changer and we will not be using all of these but we will be using input 1 here for the home sensor, input 2 for the pulse counter, input 4 for the tools being retracted and input 5 for the uh, tools being in position for a tool change. You may also need to use input 6 if you're using uh, spindle indexing, uh, input 7 and 8 for the drawbar being locked and unlocked. 
But for what I am wiring up for this particular tool changer, uh, the only items we'll be using are the home sensor, the pulse counter, uh, tool in position, and tool retracted. And the output we'll be using is output 3 to retract and extend the tools. So let's take a look at the wiring. Now what I did was I mounted one of these DB9 connectors. Uh, it's, it's, this is a nice terminal board here to bring all of our connections straight into this. And then we can just simply run a DB9 cable from the ATC back to our Maso. So that's what I did. Now you can pick up these DB9 connectors off of Amazon. Uh, they have different ones. You can pick up a male and female like this. Uh, if you're not sure exactly what you're going to need but these are really nice there's it's a really nice box you can just kind of mount the box to the side of the ATC like I did as you saw earlier and this makes for a really clean connection now for the wiring uh, we're going to need some relays uh, actually we're just going to need one for the extend and retract solenoid uh, but you can pick up this recommended relay panel here from Masso so what we've got is we've got 24 volts going through a 1 amp fuse. Uh, this is going to pin 6 and pin 9 on the DB9 connector. And it's also running over to the relay board. Uh, we then have our negative 24 volts going to pin 7 on the DB9 connector. And then down to our relay board as well as over to our common on relay one here and then it goes through the normally open connection back out to pin eight on the db9 connector so the input is output four for this or output three for this relay and we're using relay one here and that is going to activate our slide solenoid. So when this relay is active, it's going to send, it's going to close the connection for the 24 volt negative on pin eight. And it's going to go out to our relay and activate that. The 24 volts positive will always be on the relay solenoid from pin nine, which again comes from our one amp fuse. You may also want to wire up a air blast so you, with that you can connect an, a, a second relay to do that. Uh, next we have our 24 volt common and 24 volt positive going to our sensors. Now this is not a mistake here. The blue is connected to the brown because the blue on these reed sensors for the extend and retract is actually the 24 volts these are two wire connections and then we have the signal side uh, going to pin 5 for extend and 4 for retract and then those go to pin 4 and 5 on our db9 connector over to the maso on input 4 and 5 input 4 for retract and input 5 for tool in position or extended and then next we have our counter and our home sensors uh, these are different. The brown here is the 24 volts. The blue is our zero volts and these are three wire sensors. The black is actually our signal wire and we have them going to pin one for our home sensor and pin two for our counter which go to one and two on our DB9 and then come over to inputs one and two on the Maso G3. Pretty simple and straightforward on the wiring for the Maso G3. So that pretty much is uh, the wiring needed for the BT30 ATC tool changer for the Maso G3 controller. Again, there are other features if you need to have those uh, for spindle indexing or the drawbar locked and unlocked. But those will be wired to, uh, to another location uh, besides the ATC. But specifically for the tool changer, this is the basically all the wiring that is needed to get that up and running. Alright guys, well that wraps up this video. And then if you're new to my channel guys, click on that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Also click on that notification bell if you haven't.
That way when I post a new video like this, if it's something you're interested in, they'll send you a link and you can stop by and check it out. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.